Welcome to Tendok Talks about the Power Rangers role-playing game. Today, I wanted to talk about some of the roles that you can be, namely the Green Ranger. Why are we starting with the Green Ranger when the very first entry is the Black Ranger? Because you know you want to be the Green Ranger. If someone asks you, hey, we're going to play the Power Rangers role-playing game, uh, what Power Ranger do you want to be? Red and green, right? Gotta be. Well, let's take a look at the Green Ranger and see how viable he is as a uh, as a role in the game. Anybody who has played Dungeons and Dragons before has an idea of what base classes are: fighter, cleric, rogue, wizard, etc. Power Rangers does not quite have that, but they do have parallels, or they do have things that get rather close. And in this case, the Green Ranger is most closely related to Dungeons & Dragons Rogue. Although, it has much more survivability than a Dungeons & Dragons Rogue. As you may have already noticed, health in the Power Rangers role-playing game is determined by skill selection and has nothing to do with your, with your role or, you know, class. And the, your defenses also don't have very much to do... Well, it kind of has to do with your role. But for the most part, again, it's about how you spent your essence points. The Green Ranger actually is pretty stacked when you make him because he gets plus two strength and plus, two sp and plus one speed right away. And strength and speed are the two things that increase the fastest on him. He gets seven improvements to strength and seven improvements to speed. Three improvements to smarts and four improvements to social throughout his leveling up career. So he's very fast and he's very strong, but his special abilities are such that he functions best alone. So what do I mean by that? He has a solo strike ability that he gets from level one. <clears throat> Basically, if, his, if the target of his attack isn't adjacent to any of your allies, you get to add a shift to your role, which is an advantage. So if your martial arts ability was 1d4, it becomes 1d6 for this round. Um, or it become, or if it was already 1d6, it becomes 1d8, etc, etc. Thing is, though, you're only allowed to do that shift once. Because you're only allowed to, ta to attack once. This is a special... This is a special kind of attack. It has to be a melee attack, and once you use it, you can't make use of any multiple attacks or any other things that would grant you an attack. This is it. This is your attack. And at level 1, it's only one shift, but by level 20, I think it's up to 3 or 4. So it, it levels up with you as you go. So it's still pretty good. <clears throat> as you know, in uh, the Power Rangers game, most things do 1 damage or 2 damage, so the best you can do to improve your chances of hurting something is increasing your accuracy, and this is a great way to do it. At second level, he gets to select something called a survival boon. And there are four or five of them. You can only take, over the course of your career, maybe two or three of them. First one's at level two, but the next one is until, like, level 11 or something. It makes you wait a pretty long time, but... Of the choices, you have, what, 360 degree awareness, which makes it so you can't be surprised, and you get an upshift to alertness and, and, and uh, initiative. <clears throat> you have enhanced shell, I think is what it's called. Basically, it's the golden shield that the Green Ranger had in the show, and it raises your toughness by one. Well, uh, yeah, yeah. Raises your toughness by one. So, if you actually want to look like the Green Ranger from the show with the shield, you need to take this survival boom. But then there is a survival boom called Savant. And Savant allows you to treat any skill that you're not trained in as if you had a D2. Now you might be thinking, oh, okay, that sounds pretty good. D2 instead of just a D20. No. Remember, in the Power Rangers role-playing game, if you do not have a skill, you roll at disadvantage. They call it snag. So you went from rolling 2D20 and taking the lowest number 
to rolling one d20 and adding a d2 to it. That is a much, much bigger deal than just adding a d2 because every skill in the Power Rangers role-playing game that you're not trained in is garbage because you roll a disadvantage. The Green Ranger having the ability to make every single skill a d2 is amazing. It is so, so good. So, if you want to be a skill monkey, which is basically a, a term for rogues from Dungeons and Dragons, Green Ranger Man all the way. Once you get to level 2, you are the jack of all trades. Now, if you actually want to invest in one of your skills, you still can. Like, if you weren't invested in initiative, and then you level up your speed so you get to add one to initiative, you can still do that. It's just that first point that you spend deactivates Savant. So, say you weren't trained in initiative, so you have a D2 in it. You decide you're actually going to put some points into it, so you put one point in initiative, Savant goes away and you, and, but, and you still have D2 because of that investment point. So it's not a shortcut that lets you boost skills too fast. <laughs> but holy crap. By, uh, by mid-level, I think it's level 10, you get this ability that lets you spend a power point to give your uh, survival boon to somebody else. And they have to spend a power point to receive it. So that scene from uh, the show where the Green Ranger gave his shield to Zack or gave his shield to Jason, you can basically do that. Except it doesn't have to be the shield. You could give them Savant. You could give them 360 Awareness. You could give them <coughs> your shield, like we just said. All those things would work. One more thing about the Green Ranger. Uh, there was some confusion about this. There is a weapons table, right? Most Power Rangers start off with a certain amount of gear, right? They get their, their sidearm, their power blaster that can turn into a knife. They get their armor. They get their morpher, wrist communicator. And they normally get a power weapon. Green Rangers starting equipment doesn't start with a power weapon because it's an ability that they mention a little bit later. Uh, the game says you roll for it. I don't know if you're allowed to just take whatever you want. You might want to talk to your GM, but you're supposed to roll for it. It's this 4x3 table, right? There's three columns. The first column is what weapon do you have? The second column is what special effect does it have? And then the last column is what is the drawback of this weapon? Because they all have drawbacks. It would be very easy to assume that... So, so you roll a d4 to decide which one you get. It would be very easy to assume that if you roll a d4, you take the whole row, right? This weapon, this effect, this risk. But that's not how it works. You're actually supposed to roll 3d4 and do it by row and column. So you look at the chart and you roll 1d4... And that's what weapon you get. It'll either be a melee weapon, a ranged weapon, a large weapon, a small weapon, or something like that. Write that down. Roll d4 again. And now you look at the second column, which is what is the special effect of the weapon? Does it do energy instead of its listed damage? Does it summon a zor? I don't, I, don't, I don't know what the others are. Write that down. And then when you get to column number three... You roll 1d4 again, and you pick your drawback. This is incredibly unclear in the book. Uh, this came from clarification from a stream, so keep that in mind. So, Green Ranger, the closest thing that you're going to get to a rogue in this game. Stay tuned for more.